Hi everyone, this is uh, Dr. Anthony Chafee. I'm here with a very special guest today, uh, Hollywood actor and model, Antonio Sabato Jr. Uh, Antonio, thank you so much for coming on. It's been it's an actual uh, pleasure of mine to to meet you. I've uh, actually seen you in your work um, all throughout the you know the the 90s and and 2000s, and so it's a, it's a real pleasure to speak to you. Hey, thank you for coming on. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Anthony. I really appreciate it. Yeah, not a problem. So. Um, you were telling me that, that you've actually come across the carnivore diet now, and that's uh, been something that, that, that's helped you. That's, that's probably an anomaly in uh, Hollywood. Everyone else is going vegan um, and, yeah. <laughs> uh, and be very, very aggressive about that. Um, yeah. you know, how, how did you come across the carnivore and, and what made you decide to, to go that, that route and how did it help you? Well, I, uh, I've been in fitness and sports my whole life. Uh, I, I love to train really hard. I love to push myself and I just turned 50. So I, I, I've been doing this since I was a teenager and, and I've been in the fitness world all my life. That's, that, it's something that is a big part of my life. Uh, I enjoy it. Um, it's, it's something that I have to do daily, you know, in every home that I've ever owned, we will always build a gym. I have a gym right here that I use and I go running. I, 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 you know, I race cars. I race motorcycles. I, I skydive. I, I, you know, and I also do jujitsu. I like to wrestle. I like to do things and weights and stuff. So, and I've been boxing my whole life. So I, I, I tend to really know my body really well. And I've, I've tried a lot of diets over the years. I even tried vegan, and that was horrible. That was one of the, <laughs> one of the most horrible experiences I ever went through, because I, I tried. I wanted to do. I wanted to try things and. And this is just for me. I'm not here to preach to anybody what to do, but for myself, I really know my body. I know I know what goes through. I know I mean really like I know how I feel on a daily basis, um, and it's all related to the food that I put in my body and the rest that I get. Um, and and I and I tried everything, and and I've done research this whole year. I spent a lot of time researching this carnivore diet, and I found out that you know the only way to really find out if it's going to work after everything that I read, uh, including stuff that you have talked about, um, I said, let's give it a try. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you, um, one of the things that I, re I realized that uh, I wanted to do was cut, cut coffee. I, I didn't want to drink coffee anymore. It was just a habit. It was, it's a drug. I, I drank it every day. And then I had to put the creamer every day. It was an addiction every morning, every morning, every morning. And, and in the past, when I cut coffee, I had these migraines. I've always had these migraines for at least a week or two. Yeah. And they were really bad. And it was one of the things that really scared me to quit because I just didn't want to have these things going on. Well, guess what? When I started this carnivore diet, I had no migraines at all. I had, I quit coffee like that. And uh, the next day, I, I was surprised I didn't have a headache. Then the next following day, I didn't have a headache. And then a week <laughs> later, I'm like, I didn't drink coffee for a week. I didn't have any caffeine for a week and I did not have a headache. And I had this really, when I started carnivore and I went really deep, I went meat, beef. Uh, I really didn't go with chicken a lot. I went really beef. I wanted to really go hardcore and see what my body could, could deal or not deal with. Uh, and it was fascinating. Right away, I had, in the morning, I would get maybe five hours of sleep and, and I was working on the movie. So I was really tired I felt but then in the morning I would wake up and I had all this energy I had amazing energy and I would just I would work out before going on set I would work 14 hours I would go to sleep I would eat these two maybe three meals but it was all beef and it was I, I put some fruit in it pineapples things like that but I got rid of all sugar I got rid of all bread I got rid of all pasta I got rid of potatoes. I got rid of vegetables. I got rid of all that, and it was just fascinating. And I was, I was kind of, I was kind of contemplating about the the constipation you hear about, and I was not constipated at all. My body felt really good, energetic. I felt like I was like on steroids. I felt like um, I was taking something that was just. I was really unreal. The, the 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 effect that it had on my body, and it still does today. Like, um, you know, when I got back home after the movie. And I had some free time. I worked out twice a day. I had so much, and I still do. Like I worked out in the morning. I would have an hour of bike, and I would just go on the bike and run for an hour and just sweat and hardcore. I'm talking about like really hardcore on the bike. And then I would have my 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 meats, and I would have the things that I usually do now. 
uh, and eat like my eggs uh, and I would have the cheese and the eggs um, and the sausages and things like that. A lot of water. Water is great. It's just floating through my body. And then in the afternoon, I would go for another one and I would go for weights and box. And then before you know it, in a matter of like, I think two and a half weeks, I lost 20 pounds. Yeah. Well, and it was like, and I was having such a hard time losing any weight because I would either put it back or I would be hungry and I would eat certain things. And then the, the carbs and, the, and, and all that stuff that I was eating before. And, I, and I've always had a clean diet, but I never really knew how clean it was until now. Because now, now it's a whole different ballgame. And, and I'm having this blood work down next month. And I know my doctor is going to say, I, I'm, I'm, I'm skeptical to find out about my cholesterol level because obviously it might be high. It might be, I don't know, but. I really don't care about that because what I care about is how I'm feeling and I, I'm feeling better than ever before. And I don't take, I hate taking any protein powders. I, t I hate taking creatine. I hate, I don't take any of that stuff. Uh, I believe all that stuff is bad for you. It's poison. So I am just sticking to grass fed a lot, a lot of grass fed, a lot of burgers um, that are just awesome to eat. And they fill me up. Like I don't have uh, I have honey. I have honey on these burgers, which is really good. Uh, I have a little bit of ketchup, uh, but and, and cheese. But I feel fulfilled. Like I don't, I don't crave anything else. And when I see other people eat, you know, I go out with my fiance. We go out to dinner, and she's eating something that you know maybe I, I would eat in the past. I don't crave it. I don't crave it at all. So my body's really full. It's incredible. I think it's amazing. The best. I should have done it a long time ago. I'm really happy about it. Yeah. So, so how long have you been doing it now? Well, now it's been a constant over 30 days of just yeah. really full on. And I don't intend to stop anytime soon. I am going to continue this for the rest of my life. Um, I really am. Uh, and I'm really consistent on things, you know, when I've set my mind on something, because why would I change it? I mean, right. I, I, I don't see any reason why I would change it uh, because I feel, I just, I feel the best I ever felt. And also the recuperation uh, muscle aches, um, sleeping. Uh, it's just incredible how my body just really reacted really, really well. Um, and I, like I said, I don't take any, um, any additional, you know, for, for vitamin C, you know, I have my orange juice uh, with, with, you know, with no sugar, just really fresh orange juice. Um, and then pineapples. I love eating pineapple. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I leave it at that and I feel great. I feel yeah. really good and strong. I feel really strong. My skin is really thin. Uh, I have, I mean, I have muscles and things that came out of my abs that I never had in my, <laughs> it's like, it's just, I feel good, man. I'm not complaining. I'm looking yeah. pretty good. Nice. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing. Like, uh, you know, obviously we, we, we try to live healthy and, and especially in your industry, you know, you, you have, you have you have to, you know, you have to you know, keep your body in shape. You have to keep your, your, your mind and body right, you know, to uh, look good and feel good and be able to do these long hours on the sets. But it's only when you actually get on the right path or, or you know, get on, on what I, I believe is, is our primary way of eating mm -hmm. that you actually see just how good you could have felt, just how good, you know, good actually feels. And then, and then everything um, you look back on just goes like, crap, you know, I actually haven't been feeling good my whole life, apparently. And so for me personally, like, yeah, I just, I, I have no interest and, and going back to that, that's, and uh, yeah. So. No. no, and the coffee thing was really, a, that was an addiction for me because I'm Italian. I was born <laughs> in Rome, Italy. I mean, coffee was always part of my life. It's just yeah. everywhere and I was drinking too much of it. And, uh, and I needed that to wake up and I just hated that because it's like, what do I need stuff? You know, I always felt like you know, I don't need anything. You know, I just want to, and now I don't need anything. Now I, yeah. I get up and I have, I have my full meals and, uh, and they get me going. And, and most importantly, uh, it's how I feel afterwards, you know, like, um, just everything really, my, my sharpness, my memory, uh, is incredible. I really am sharp about everything, memorizing stuff more than ever. My eyesight, um, my lungs too, when I go running, um, how, how hard I can push you know, like I said, I'm 50, so I'm not a I'm not a spring chicken, but I I, uh, I I just love to train so much that in the past, you know, I would have to, you know, if I push too hard, I get either too sore. I, I you know, 
or I hurt myself and I have to take it easy. Now I don't take it easy at all. Now I just keep yeah. pushing. <laughs> you know, I just keep going. So I'm like, how far can I go? So it's yeah. um, it's exciting to to do that, and because um, it makes me feel great. You know, it's part of my life. I don't I don't I train because you know the hormones and everything that kicks in. My testosterone level is incredible right now. You know, it's just um, wow. I mean, I'm telling you, man. I, I when people ask me and I tell them what's going on, they quite don't understand and they're kind of scared because they've heard so many negative things and so did i i mean in the past mm. the cholesterol level is a big thing the constipation is always a big thing but um you know the vegetable things um uh, i got rid of a lot of it and mo i mean all of it and i feel great i don't need them at all for anything you yeah. know and yeah. i'm glad i don't have to buy any more vegetables anymore <laughs> <laughs> uh, like um yeah that's the thing uh with with constipation yeah as long as you get enough fat generally uh, you're not going to be constipated that'll keep everything soft and and that's uh, that's something that people don't realize they always think that it's fiber 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 that's what moves your digestion but that those recommendations only came around in the 1980s after we said stop eating fat and that's when people started getting constipated because they weren't getting enough fat and then they said oh well you should just you should eat fiber that will that will keep things moving through but that, that was a brand new suggestion and so people don't realize that like you know, it doesn't really make sense that we would all of a sudden as a species need to eat a lot of fiber to move our digestion in 1986, but before that needed nothing, you know? And, True. Um, yeah. I so, remember that because in the eighties, I remember, uh, there was all those, uh, you know, take, take your fiber in the morning. The, mm -hmm. Remember that there was, it was that product, especially in America when it came here, it was, um, I don't remember what it was, but it was, it was every morning. It was a commercial plan. You got to put scoop in the water and you got to put fiber yeah. and it became such a thing. But I got to tell you the, the, the vegan, the vegan was for me was horrible, man. Mm. I was like, I was burping a lot. I had a lot of gas constant. Gas, like it was just uncomfortable. It really yeah. uncomfortable. And I felt weak. Uh, the estrogen level was really high. Cause I remember I was really emotional um a lot of times they're like why am i emotional about this you know and um i i definitely would never ever 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 do a vegan diet ever again it's the worst thing i could possibly do to my body um 100 uh no question yeah. no question and when like you said hollywood is very high on these things on the protein shakes and all this stuff and you have to take all these supplements and and, and we don't even know what's in the supplements and it, I used to train many years ago with an old, old, old timer and, um, he, he's passed away now, but he was, he was a great guy. He used to tell me all the time. I said, if you were, if you were starving in a desert and you had a protein shake or you had a rotten hot dog, which one would you eat? <laughs> which one would keep you alive? And, and at the end of the day, probably the hot dog will keep you alive. So, you know, more than the, than the, the man-made uh, powder. So, and that is so true nowadays mm. because, People go and they buy this stuff and they, and they look at all these YouTubers who are taking so much gear. I don't care who you are because I, I, I'm in sports, you're in sports, we have trained our whole life and you know what it takes to get your body to look like that. I mean, it's, it's just, and I wish to God that people would have, because everybody from sports, athletes, even the Olympics are taking gear. Everybody knows it. It's just constant. They're not tested as much as they should be. And everybody gets away with it. But all these fitness guys, they are taking so much stuff and injecting so many things. I wish to God they could at least talk about what they're doing and how much they're taking. So instead of giving the lies about these products that they're trying to sell, tell the world what's going on. What are you taking? What are you injecting yourself? What kind of pills are you doing? Because, because kids are doing that. And whether you like it or not, they might buy your products. They might buy your, your shakes or you might use all this stuff. But that doesn't work. And that actually ultimately will kill your intestines. I, I know it because it's just, it's, it's going to affect you inside. When you put stuff in your body, it's got to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. And that stuff is just artificial stuff that we don't even know what's in. But they inject themselves so much. And all the, the fitness contests are all, you know, they're all under drug. I mean, they're all taking so much stuff. And I, and I wish to, and it's so easy to get it. And um, that would be so beneficial to the next generation to understand what's going on. Because if you want to compete, and you want to inject yourself with something, you have a doctor's supervision, all that stuff, and you, and you explain and you talk about it, that could help a lot of lives because, you know, that's your heart. And I'm not talking about 
testosterone. I'm talking about a lot of other stuff that they're taking that uh, it's just killing people, man. And, and, and in the long run, it's not going to be good, you know. And I wish to God that they would tell the truth because we all know it's fun to watch them and it's fun to see them train and all that stuff. But talk the truth. Tell, you know, you're making millions of dollars by doing stuff that is not good for you. Let us know what it is. Or at least let know your viewers what it is. Have the guts to say, this is what I take every day. And, and I wish, I wish they, they, would, they would do that because it would help a lot of people, especially the kids yeah. out there. Yeah, and also, you know, when, when kids get, you know, the ideas that they, they can do this stuff and then they can play professionally, you know, it's one thing if someone's, you know, that they're perpetuating their career and they're saving for their future and they're taking care of their family and they're, you know, that, that risk and detriment to their health you know, maybe that's worth it to them because they're actually getting paid to, to do that. But, you know, think about how many thousands of kids uh, or young adults end up using these performance enhancing drugs to try to make it, you know, even to just to make it a college football team or make it into, uh, you know, the NFL or some professional team and never make it. And so they're getting all the harm to their body and, and future, and they're getting none of the, of the benefits from that. And so there's, there's a, a bigger knock-on effect as well than just the people that are, that are doing this to perform because there are thousands and thousands of other people that are never going to be able to, they're never going to make it to the show that they're still hurting themselves with this stuff. Right. You know? And there's, a, there's actors that I know, you know, a lot of actors have their trainers, you know, for a specific movies, they train for three months, they get their trainer, their, <laughs> their nutritionist, they do all that and they inject themselves with a lot of stuff. And then afterwards, they let it go and then and then afterwards they don't want to train you know and not all of them there's there's some good guys out there that are training hard that are doing the right thing but you know the big movies the studio movies they want you to look a certain way and, and these guys have never worked out before so before you know it three months later they're all jacked and ready to go and then after the movie is done they go back to what they're used to be um where you know i believe the actors that i love you know like tom cruise people like you know or, or even guys in the past you know like uh you know when brando was younger or paul newman you know he's always looked mm. lean or bruce lee or people like that that really it was a different time or even steve reeves steve reeves was a natural guy back in the day you know he was he was uh he was a strong guy who lived a really long life a healthy life uh but you know people like schwarzenegger and people like that that have done a lot of gear, a lot of stuff. And, you know, Schwarzenegger had how many heart plans? I mean, he, he had surgeries after surgery. He's lucky to be alive. You should talk about that because mm. I'm sure that the heart surgeries that he had was, was affected by all the drugs he was injecting himself. You know, he, and the thing is, you couldn't have won those Mr. Universe if it wasn't for the drugs you took. So at least talk about it and say, this is how much I took. This is what I was taking. And now to another level, now they're taking it to another level. Now they're taking so much more stuff that, you know, these guys are just risking their lives. But I, I'm telling you, like, this diet is just waking me up to a new level of, of health and, and fitness that I really enjoy. And uh, I love talking about this stuff because, you know, when you promote yourself out there on YouTube and you're lying to a lot of people and you're making a lot of millions of dollars lying, uh, it's not right. It's not right. You know, and uh, and we all know the truth, but it's not okay to lie constantly. You know, I just, I just don't think, you know, you can lie a thousand times. It's still going to be a lie. You know, it's not going to be the truth ever. Yeah. And, um, but it is what it is. You know, th this new social media that we have is so easy to, but also it, it's good because I was able to look at people like yourself and, and, and understand about this new diet and new, new way of living and stuff. So there's good and bad. Uh, I hope the people that watch stuff like we were doing here and rather than other stuff that is not so true, you know? Yeah, definitely. And that's the thing too, is that this is, this is a way that you can optimize your hormones, optimize your health. And like you say, you know, get, get the effects, like you feel like you're on steroids and, and in, in, in a lot of ways, you know, that's, it's not far off because, you know, I've, I've had patients that have completely optimized their, uh, their hormones and, you know, men in their fifties, uh, that, that increased their testosterone level by over a hundred points in three months, you know? Wow. And so that, that would be the equivalent of taking, uh, you know, a supplemental, uh, testosterone replacement therapy, it's getting them back up to, 
uh, high normal levels, physiological levels of testosterone, and and without any medications. And you know, I, I talk to people, and obviously, I get I get accused of doing steroids all the time. You know, just uh, I, just since I was a kid, really. You know, I've always, I've always, <laughs> yeah, I've always trained very very hard. I was played very aggressively in in rugby, and I remember, you know. And when I would, I would make some big play and I just go and just you know, clean someone out, people would say like, oh, Jesus, you know, calm down, you're roid freak, you know, and I, I, would, I was always taking it as a compliment and just laugh because, you know, yeah. I was out there, you know, just, you know, putting the hurt on people who really were doing steroids and I wasn't, I wasn't using any of that. And, um, and I try to tell people that going on a carnivore diet as an athlete has been, you know, just one of the biggest, uh, you know, benefits and, and, and advantages that I ever had. And I was so lucky to be, you know, I, I was still, you know, very successful before I went carnivore, uh, like sort of 1920, but I was, uh, but that it would just put me into a whole new level mm -hmm. at that point. And, you know, I try to tell people, you know, that this is actually, I, I was getting better results and I am getting better results now than people who I know were on steroids. And they, they right. don't seem to believe that, but like, I know people who were on steroids that I played with and I know how I stacked up against them. I know how I was able to compete. I know how I was able to train beside them and the results I was getting as well. And, and I, I can actually say that, that this is as good or better than taking steroids because it's not just one aspect. It's not just optimizing your testosterone or raising that whole, that hormone it's it's raising and optimizing all your hormones and how they work together and how your body works together and how your 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 muscles heal and uh, and recover and that's a that's a that's a complete package that you're not that you're not going to get just by doing steroids absolutely your body really needs it and when you when you feed it you know when you feed tigers, uh, you know, the right meat and uh, you, you just know what, what kind of animals they can become. And the same thing goes with us. Uh, it's just phenomenal because the, how I felt right away was immediate. It wasn't even like I had to wait a week or I had to wait a certain amount of time. It was just my body really needed it. And my entire crew were asking, what's going on? What are you taking? What's, what's, yeah. what's happening over there? You know, your, your jawline is everything, you know, and, and, and the questions started coming. And, and uh, I was like, wow, this, and they saw me eat and they saw me what kind of diet I, I changed. And I wouldn't even call it a diet. It's just my regimen changed dramatically and I never went back. And uh, I'm constantly just loving it every day, how I feel and, um, and trying and trying, you know, trying different way of, you know, eating maybe fish here, maybe eating meat over here, you know, just changing it up. But it's, it's just carnivore all the way and uh and it's really incredible and then you know i had you know we went out the other night and um and even 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 uh eating at other places i enjoy eating their steaks right now you know i really enjoy eating steaks from different places and and um and my body really reacts really well just striving i mean just really enjoys eating it um and i, I guess that's how a tiger feels when you feed it some, yeah. some good meat <laughs> And they eat it like that because, um, and the next morning, uh, how I just get up in the morning and I'm ready to go. I don't, I don't need my coffee anymore. I don't need any, anything to wake me up anymore. I'm up and I'm ready to go, um, throughout the entire day. Uh, and that's, that's incredible. I, I look forward to that, um, each and every day. And, uh, and also the, like I said, the, the training is, is the, the amount of sweat and the way I can push now. Uh, without having any um, caffeine, without having anything that, you know, pre-workout stuff that, that pre-workout stuff was just, oh, it was horrible. I, I, it was just horrible. Um, not that I, I used to take it all the time, but there'd been moments where I was on location or I would go to Gold's Gym in Venice and I would have some some stuff that over there, you know, I was tired and, I would, and it was just, to give you that stuff on, you know, I felt weird and uh, I don't need any of that. Yeah. I mean, I'm bench, I'm bench pressing more. Um, I'm leaner and stronger. Um, veins are coming out that I didn't see before. I, I just feel great. And um, yeah, I tell everyone, just try it. Just try it for yourself and see how you feel. And then give it, give it a little bit of time. I mean, for me, it was right away, but you never know. Like, why would you want to change something that makes you feel so yeah. great?
Yeah, absolutely. So the the people on the set that saw what you were doing and saw what you were eating, had they tried yeah. to try it out themselves? Yeah, they did. They tried it, but uh, you know, it's hard because you know we as human beings are so addicted to so many things. Our addiction is so high right now. We we're so addicted to everything, whether it's social media, things that we see, or things that we put in our bodies, and all that stuff that we put in our bodies that mostly is bad is very addictive. It's like you you you. You want more of it. Uh, and I remember being there, you know, like I remember my creamer. It was part of my coffee. So I had to have, I couldn't have coffee without it. So I would buy this jug of, of creamer with so much sugar and carbs. Yeah. And it was automatic. I had a coffee. I had to put this thing in it. And, um, and it was, I remember I wanted to lose this little fat that I have. And for men, as you know, like behind our back, lower back, it's really hard to lose that fat. Uh, for me, it was, you know, I, I would do everything kind of, you know, I would run and it would just never go away. Now it's gone, you know, and in a month it's gone. And, but I remember the sugar was just, I felt like everything would just go there. You know, it's like all this extra stuff and, um, that I don't have anymore and, and I don't, I don't need it, you know, but, uh, going back to my people that saw me, they, they want to try it, but I don't know. I think you got to be, you got to, you got to really look at yourself, understand your body, see where, where you want to go, what kind of body you want to live in. Cause it's the only body you've got. So for me is, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm one of those people that when I do something, I do it a hundred percent. And I don't turn back when I find the way. And I've been looking for this way for a while, doc. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I was, I'm glad that I found it and it's never too late, but I would have done this years ago. Yeah. Um, and, but they were asking questions, you know, they were asking questions. There was one editor that was looking at all the dailies and he would see my transformation through the film. Like my jawline was coming out and coming out. I'm like, look at this. This is day three and day four and day five. And he would always bring it up to me, a, a really good kid. And I, I think I impressed him so much that he was like, he was, he was like, he was motivated hmm. by the things that I was doing to, um, to give it a try, you know, and, um, and that's all you can do. You know, you can just show by example. Um, uh, my kids are definitely on it. Um, I, 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 you know, when they're here during the summer, especially, I want them to eat like I eat and see how they feel and get rid of everything else. It just doesn't make any sense, you know, and, um, just, there's so much best stuff that people eat throughout the day. It's just, it's, it's amazing to me. It's scary too, uh, mm -hmm. because of just heart problems, diabetes and so many other things that are happening that are constant happening to people, you know, like they were just recently, just people just, you know, like they go to sleep and they don't wake up the next day. You know, they they die in their sleep. You know, we had, you know, phenomenal actor Ray Liotta just passed away. I don't know what the reasons were, but it's just happening too often, you know, where people are not waking up and I never seen so much in the news where actors, celebrities or people that are in the limelight don't wake up in the next day. And, mm -hmm. I know it's got something to do with your heart, heart attacks and things like that. And I, I know it has to do with the food that we put in our body or definitely something that goes in our body that's making our heart stop. And um, I certainly don't want that to happen to me. I want my heart to keep going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I've actually noticed that as well. And, you know, I, I when people sort of hit hit a certain age, especially men, that that big push of like you know you really got to take care of yourself you got to worry about your cholesterol and and you worry about heart disease and people get worried about that they have kids they want to be able to to be there for their kids and not have a heart attack early and so they end up they end up dropping meat they dropping steaks um i remember um how was it um luke perry you know he was saying the same thing he he unfortunately passed away early and I think he was like 52 and he, and he was saying that he used to be a big steak and potato guy, but then when he sort of hit 40, he sort of went, you know, dropped the steaks and just went more vegetables. And, and it appears that that's when his, his health sort of took a dive. Yeah. And the Carnello, you know, Carnello Anthony was uh, the boxer who just lost the fight. Hmm. He was heavy. Uh, he was eating like horse meat. I mean, he was really heavy yeah, on nice. the meat and he was unbeatable. The moment he went vegan, he's like full, yeah. full vegan. He just lost his fight. And I think he's going to keep losing. And uh, yeah. you just see a difference in their body. They become like, they become sag, like saggy. They become, they're, they're not as solid and strong. It's kind of like the body wants it and you're depleting it with giving it all these vegetables and all this stuff that it just doesn't, uh, 
but like I said, I tried it and I was really without any energy. I mean, I, I could not have a good day on, on, on full vegan and those, those disgusting burgers, man. Oh my God. <laughs> oh man. With the beans and everything like, um, and I don't miss beans by the way. Yeah. I don't miss beans. And I, I, you know, my girl is Cuban. So beans and rice is a big thing. But I don't miss it. I, I don't miss it. I don't miss the beans. I don't miss I don't miss the, the spinach. I don't miss the broccoli. Um, I go to the supermarket and I, I know exactly what I want. And it's really easy, actually, because it's it's, it's fish, beef and and, and, and and less chicken, but mostly beef and, and, and fish um, macro. I love to eat macro and, and tuna and all that. But but the beef is great and sirloin is great and all kinds of beef. And you can make beef in all kinds of ways, stews, whatever, you name it. It's, it's endless. And, uh, and, and beef uh, broth uh, and, and, and bone marrow. I mean, there's just endless stuff. I haven't started with, with, the, with the heavier, you know, with the heart or the tongue or any of that sort of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but but I, I'm not saying no to it. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely, I, I don't know about the raw stuff. I'm not into the raw stuff. <laughs> I, I definitely want to. I want to cook the stuff, uh, but, uh, you know, unless I had somebody with me who kind of could show me with me and see, but I, I still want to cook the stuff. <laughs> yeah. No, you, yeah, I, don't, I don't think, I, I mean, I certainly know people that, that like eating things raw, but I don't, I don't think it confers any specific benefit that I've seen anyway. You know, maybe you get some things a bit more uh, accessible uh, and easier to- liver, do you eat liver? Very rarely, almost, almost never. Yeah, you don't need to eat eat the organs um you know if you're if you're coming from a vegan diet or, or even just a standard diet uh liver is probably your best friend because you're so nutrient deplete that it you know it has an abundance of nutrients but it can that can be a problem as well because uh, vitamin toxicity is just as dangerous as, as vitamin deficiencies and so if you're if you're eating organs too often you can you can build these things up and especially the fat soluble vitamins like vitamin a that, that takes a long time to clear out, out of your body and it can just build up and build up. And so, you know, like the, the, you know, the Inuit and people living in the North, they, they really don't eat organs at all. They give those to their, to their dogs. And, you know, if you eat even a moderate amount of, of seal liver, you'll, you'll die from, from uh, vitamin A toxicity and polar bear liver was just like any amount of that will kill you from the amount of vitamin A that's in there. So what about supplement liver supplements pills that some people are talking about? How do you, mm. are those something that you would add to your diet or, or, yeah. or is there some companies better than others? Of, of, yeah. of, and how much should you take? If you yeah. do, I, I, I wouldn't. Yeah. I don't, I don't think you need it. Like if you're, if you're just eating a standard diet, you know, that's, that's nutrient deficient, then sure. You know, take, take some, some liver or liver supplements, but if you're on a carnivore diet, then no, you don't need it. Uh, I haven't, I haven't taken any of those supplements. I don't take, you know, every now and then if I, if I'm not getting enough sun or it's like winter months and like I'm in the Northwest or something like that, and you're just not going to get exposure to the, to the light as much, you'll still get vitamin D from, you know, butter and animal fat. But, you know, maybe if I don't feel like I'm getting enough, I might supplement with vitamin D3. That's it. I don't, I don't take anything else. What and, about yogurt and milk? Would you suggest yogurt and milk to be something that you would add to your diet? Only if you want it. Um, I, I avoid milk just because it has, has carbs in it and it has enough lactose in it that that'll spike your insulin. And so yeah. it's, um, and I also find that uh, it you know sort of gets into that carb addiction as well. I ended up really craving sure. milk. I'll have some of it. And I'm like, oh my god, I want more of that. And right. um, yeah, and it just tastes amazing. And you know, the, my sense of sweetness, uh, my my you know sort of experience of a sweet taste is much more uh, refined now. So if just drinking a glass of milk, it, it tastes like I'm drinking ice cream. And like that's that's like dangerous for me. So I'm drinking that. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> that is that's so amazing. true. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, so I, I avoid that, but, um, things like yogurt, if it's just, yeah, raw, plain, full fat yogurt every now and yeah. then, like if I were to need to take antibiotics, say, then I would maybe have, have a bit of, of yogurt with that, but, or with like ground beef and just having some yogurt put on, put yeah. on top of that, you know, sort yeah. of in a Mediterranean style sort of, um, condiment. 
yeah. or, or cheese, but I would really just use it as, as a condiment. You know, it's not that there's necessarily anything bad in the, in the like fermented, uh, milk products or cheese, but they don't necessarily have every have cheese, right? You have cheese you and as a condiment. Yeah. Um, a condiment. But yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll like melt it onto like beef patties or something like that, right. but, right. uh, I wouldn't have, I certainly wouldn't have it even every week. You know, it's, um, it's, it's a rarity that I have that just, but I, I just like the meat on its own. And, you know, so I, I just, pref I just prefer that flavor and that taste and, and it has everything that you need anyway. Some people have a problem with dairy. Some people do need to avoid it, especially people with autoimmune issues. They seem to be more sensitive to the milk proteins, which can be slightly, uh, pro-inflammatory, but, but a lot of people don't have a problem with it. I don't really have a problem with it, but I do feel the best just eating straight beef and so even even if i'm uh, having some dairy you know i just i just won't feel as just you know just as, as tight and hard uh on the on it as uh, as i normally do and so yeah I, I do too and i one of the things too that i do now that i didn't do before i mean i've always eaten beef but when i, I used to eat a steak i never really finished it or i never really ate the fat of it or something like that i was kind of you know, I, I would eat it, yeah. but not, but now I devoured it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now it's gone to the bone, you know, and, and then it just, it really is, it fills me up. Um, my body feels really full and, yeah. and my brain, because it's all like the addiction of, because now that I got rid of the sugar, it's like a, it's like a past thing in the, in the past, the sugar is in the past. It's like something in the back of my head mm -hmm. that I, I don't need. It's there. Um, uh, it's kind of like an addiction too. Like, you know, if you yeah. get rid of an addiction and, and you don't want to go back to it because you know how bad it was, yeah. And but it's still there. You want to be aware because you're, you're a recovering addict. So that's what we are. <laughs> We're yeah, recovering yeah. addicts and, uh, and you know how it makes you feel. Um, and, um, and I'm sure that if I fell through the cracks and I had like, I don't know if I had some sugar in between, I would, I would really feel it right away. It would be so yeah. Right. It's, it's that addiction coming back. I don't want this anymore, you know? So yeah, that's good. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like fru fructose actually is a drug and that's, and that's something that I, I think really needs to be, you know, if not age restricted, at least, you know, generally put out there that, that fructose actually fructose specifically gives a dopamine response to the addiction centers of your brain, you know, just yeah. like the hard drugs like cocaine and heroin. And uh, there have been MRI studies uh, that Dr. Lustig from UCSF talks about showing that when, when people are given uh, like a, a dose of amphetamines who haven't you know, been addicted to any substances, you know, certain areas of the brain will obviously you know, light up. If you give that someone to uh, you know, a, a, a drug addict who's been addicted to drugs for a long time, those areas won't light up as much. There'll be sort of a, a softer twinkle. But if you give that same dose of amphetamines to someone who's metabolically sick and is sugar addicted, it's the same response as the drug addict. And, and that's quite scary. So this means that this is, yeah. this is A, it's addictive as these hard drugs, and it's actually killing the same areas of your brain as these hard drugs. Um, just because that, that dop dopamine turns on, uh, it's an excitatory model, molecule, so it turns on your, your brain cells. When your brain cells are firing, they, they get damaged. And this is why we need to sleep. This is why we need to sort of turn off parts of our brain to, to heal itself. And if you're just constantly hitting it with, with dopamine, it just won't let it, you know, go to sleep and eventually dies. And so you can do that with sugar, just as you can do that with, with, uh, other drugs. And so it, yeah, it's, it's absolutely horrible, especially because we don't even realize how horrible it is and we put it in everything and we're giving this stuff to kids. And, you know, you know, think about, you know, we talk about a, a sugar high and you give some kid sugar and they're bouncing off. They turn into little, you know, maniacs. And, right. and then, you know, you hear people, the justification for it is like, well, why are you giving them sugar? It's just like, well, they just really like it. They really like it. And it's like, would you say the same thing about cocaine? Yeah, I'm sure they'd like that. You know, I'm sure they'd, right. you know, be, be all for that if you slip that in somewhere. But, you know, obviously, be, oh gosh, I would never do that. But because we don't recognize this actually as a drug, then, then we actually are giving this stuff to kids, which I think is a bit uh, is, is a bit unfortunate because I, I think it causes a lot of damage to them. And let's talk also, I wanted to hear your opinion on this 
which is comes up as you know cholesterol right the cholesterol mm -hmm. situation right because as soon as you start talking beef you start talking about eggs the cholesterol level if your cholesterol level is high mm -hmm. and then you know now i'm going to be doing my blood work i'm excited to see what's what, what that's going to look like but i know it's going to come up yeah and how, how do you how do you respond about this cholesterol level situation and, and kind of put people at ease because they're all so scared of this word you know yeah absolutely yeah the so, so the thing that people need to, to realize first and foremost is that cholesterol was never the problem. Cholesterol was never a marker or indicator for disease and, and particularly heart disease. That, that was a fraud played against the, the, the people of the world. We have hard evidence of that. Ansel Keys uh, was, a, was a paid shill. You know, we have documents showing that he was paid off by the sugar companies to put forward you know, false uh, studies and data and, and to doctor his own studies and research to make it look like cholesterol was a problem when it really wasn't. Uh, he did something called the Seven Nations Study, which he found these seven countries that sort of fit this parabolic curve. And it just showed the, the more uh, cholesterol that they had, the higher rates of uh, heart disease that they had. And it, and it sort of, it, it showed like it's exponential growth. And he said, wow, look at this. I, I looked at seven, seven countries and they just, they just fit this, this graph perfectly. The problem is that, that they don't tell you is that he had full data for 23 countries. And those were completely scattered. They were all over the map. So there wasn't even a correlation. You know, it, there, there wasn't, there was no association between more cholesterol and higher rates of heart disease. It was completely unrelated. And while you can never sh you know, prove causation from, cor from a correlation, you know, you at least have to have correlation to have causation. So if you prove that there's no correlation, which he actually showed, his own study showed there's no correlation between higher cholesterol and heart disease, that proves there's no causation because you cannot have causation without first having correlation. And, and there's more of this. There was um, the Journal of the American Medical Association, JAMA, they published in 2015, a study from University of California, San Francisco Medical School. Uh, you know, it's a top six research institution in America for medical research. They published this study in JAMA showing actual internal memos from the sugar companies back in, I think, the 60s, uh, mm -hmm. talking about how they paid off three Harvard professors to falsify data and publish fraudulent studies, again, to make it look as if cholesterol caused heart disease when it was really sugar. And one of those professors was named head of the USDA, and he was the one who authored and published the 1977 declaration from the USDA that cholesterol caused heart disease. And, that, and that's what completely upended the scientific discussion. This was hotly debated since the 1950s. I remember seeing, uh, you know, uh, papers back in 1956 in JAMA talking about how, you know, they said, well, you know, it's it's basically accepted that, you know, cholesterol is is uh, you know indicated in in heart disease, but this is based on really bad data and really bad evidence, and these studies are crap. And and it just went through excoriating the 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 idea that cholesterol caused heart disease they just show that like these are really bad studies this is really bad data this is this is low level evidence we shouldn't be changing our entire practice based on these things so this is this is a hotly debated subject for decades and then all of a sudden the USDA said no no that's it and and everyone you know appealing to authority just said oh well teacher weighed in you know you were wrong and it and it just completely just just shut down the conversation and destroyed these guys careers um, we have hard evidence that that was never the case. And all the big studies after 2015, these large meta-analyses going through literature reviews and, and really looking through hundreds and hundreds of thousands of patients, they've actually found that there is no association, no correlation between higher LDL cholesterol or even higher saturated fat and cholesterol or stroke. In fact, they found inverse relationships. So you know, you, you improved your cardiovascular health, you, you improved uh, your uh, stroke rates if you had higher cholesterol, higher LDL cholesterol. They're, they're finding this to be in, implicated in depression as well. They're finding in psychiatric journals that if you have higher L, LDL cholesterol, you're, you're protected against depression and suicide. People that had lower levels of LDL cholesterol had higher rates of depression and more importantly, higher rates of suicide. And so 
Yeah. And so now psychiatrists, this is, this is strong enough evidence in their field that now there are a lot of uh, psychiatrists that are putting their, their depressed patients on, um, or, or just telling them to get their cholesterol up. Say, look, you need to, you need to get your cholesterol up. Don't worry about your heart. Like you're, you, you know, this is, this is a bigger deal. And there's, you know, when you go, when you go see a doctor, the first thing that when, especially when you do your blood work, they check your cholesterol level and they tell you the usual stuff. The cholesterol level is too high. You got to change your yeah. diet. Yeah. What happens then? You start eating more vegetables, right? That's what they mm. tell you to do. So, and I'm sure it's going to happen. So how, how is, how is your, cause I haven't done my blood work yet. So I'm going to do it next, next month. And I want to have at least two months of carnivore really full on and have my blood work. And I'm really excited to find out what that is, but how is your cholesterol level and how would you describe it to be the right level or it could be too high or whatever, you know, cause I think that's what people really hear the most when they go see a doctor is like cholesterol is too high, change your diet, go home and eat your vegetables. Right. Yeah. I, th I think they just want to feel useful, you know, <laughs> they, just, you know they, they want to they give you your money worth, you know, just, and, and just, yeah. and just contribute to the conversation somehow. So they're all oh, cholesterol got to, you know, got to do something about that. Um, yeah. no, it, um, you know, so what, when I checked my cholesterol, my HDL was high, which is great. My triglycerides were low, which is also great. And my LDL cholesterol for, you know, what is traditionally thought to be the normal range was slightly high. But again, that was never a marker of disease. You know, LDL right. cholesterol is actually really good for you. It's, it's an important molecule in your life. And so I'm actually happy that it's there because there are a lot of studies as well looking at elderly populations, people over the age of 60, uh, which is the cohort that we're talking about here anyway that, that suffers from cardiovascular Ill, illnesses and, and stroke. They actually find that that with higher LDL cholesterol, they have longer lifespan. They have less heart attacks, less strokes. You know, they they live independently out out of a nursing home longer. So it's actually it's actually a marker of health having higher LDL yeah. cholesterol. So I'm happy with that. You know, and whatever my cholesterol is, because I know that you know, because I go back to first principles. You know, I, I all the best evidence shows that humans actually are carnivores and this is actually the way we're supposed to be eating the way we're designed to eat and so whatever my cholesterol is it's physiological my body wants it to be there and so i don't i don't worry about that um it is technically high but it's high in the context of us thinking that cholesterol was bad in the first place which it never was sure. so you know i think we really need to reimagine what the hell these uh these reference ranges really are because um, you know, it's just not the same thing. And there, there are a lot of different kinds of LDL cholesterol and, and they're not, they're not all made the same and, and they can be damaged. And that's the thing, you know, it, it sort of appears as if there might be an issue there, but that's because their you know, cholesterol damaged LDL cholesterol is actually used in atherosclerotic plaques. So when you're eating carbohydrates, you're eating sugar, you're drinking alcohol, you're going to be damaging this LDL cholesterol. And there's a, there's a molecule called ApoB100, which is a signaling molecule that allows your liver to, to suck this stuff up out of your bloodstream. And when that gets damaged, your liver can't recognize it anymore, so it can't pick it up. And now the only molecule, the only things in your body that can recognize it are your, your macrophages. And so that they just start picking these things up and picking these things up. And because there's an abundance of them and they have basically an unlimited capacity for picking these things up. They just keep doing that and they grow up into these massive foam cells, which is what we see in stuck in the walls of the arteries. And so now you have damaged wow. the artery wall and you have these macrophages doing their job, which is going to heal damage. And they go into the, into the tissue of this damaged uh, wall and they're just yeah, stuck yeah. and there's this big fat foam cell and they get stuck and they can't get out of there again. And you get, and you start building these things up. So you know, if you're not eating carbohydrates, you're not eating sugar or alcohol, you're not going to be damaging those cholesterol in the first place. So you don't, it doesn't matter what they are because they're good for you. And obviously there are things that you have to do to damage the lining of your, of your artery walls as well. Smoking is a bad thing, you know, different chemicals that we put in our body as well. And so, you know, if you're, if you're not going down that track in the first place, it really doesn't matter what, what's going on because it, you're not going to be involved in that disease process. But um, a, you can look at particulate sizes. 
You can actually do studies that just look specifically at your LDL cholesterol. And you can tell if you have like the damaged kind of LDL and, and, you know, and, you know, maybe, maybe you might still have some of that left over, but after a few months that it's going to be gone, you know, yeah. it's going to be, that's going to be, that's going to sort itself out. And a good way of sort of getting an idea of whether you have the healthy kind or not is just looking at your LDL to triglyceride ratio and not worrying about your LDL because mm -hmm. your LDL is only a problem if it's damaged and involved in a larger inflammatory disease process. But the LDL itself is not a problem. So if, you're, if your HDL is high and your triglycerides are low, this indicates that your, your, your LDL cholesterol is, is unlikely to be damaged and it's just working normally. And so, yeah. And so you just, just don't worry about it. But even if your triglycerides are like a little high, so what? So, you know, if you're not eating carbs, if you're not eating sugar, if you're not smoking, if you're not drinking, your LDL, your LDL is, is going to be undamaged. It's going to be fine. Right. Yeah. And ultimately, it's just how you feel too. And if you get to know your body yeah. so well, you just know the difference about how everything is working. And uh, it's incredible. I, I, I hope a lot of people watch this because this is so educational to me, but also to, to people that don't know because, uh, you know, telling a stranger about this, they're so skeptical about because they've been in so misinformed for so many years, pretty much since birth. Yeah. You know, and uh, and then you just stuck to this way of living um, that it's that it's just not true. And uh, yeah. we need to educate more people. Um, but I, I'm excited. I'm excited about the future. I'm excited about what I'm doing. And, and thanks to the guys like yourself that uh, yeah. I'm able to find out all this information and actually put it into practice. Yeah, well, I'm glad, man. And um, yeah, it's cool. It's cool. It's to... What's that? Sorry. It's it's our bodies and it's our life, yeah. you know. And it's and I keep telling people that it's never it's never too late to really change your life, uh, because that's the only body you have. You can't you can't get somebody else's one. You know, you just that's that's the one you have, and yeah, that's the life you have. And it's 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 incredible how I think it's really incredible how our bodies really function when you feed them right, and how fast they adjust. I, and I can, I, you know, I can prove it in the last month, like I was talking earlier, that it's just so active and so fast the moment. Yeah. And I was just blown away. I was really blown away about the timing and stuff. It wasn't even like, I mean, really, as it's been like a month now, not even, it's incredible. Yeah. That was the thing, uh, you know, I say, I say as well, like, it's never, it's never a bad time to stop eating poison. You know, yeah. and people say like, you know, it's like, well, is it too late for me? I've just been doing this my whole life. I'm like, no, it's not, it's not that. It's just, yeah, just get it, get it out of your system, you know, and, and you'll always feel better. And, you know, I, I know people, you know, my parents are, are 80 now and they started this in their late seventies and they, mm. and they just look like they just were aging backwards, you know, and their, their, their brains and their bodies just woke up and this too, like my skin, like, um, I don't use any products, you know, um, people are always surprised to see, you know, what kind of products do you use? I, I don't, I, I just, mm. I don't, I don't, you know, I'm in, you know, I, we live in Florida, so I'm in the sun, I get, you know, but it's, it's, uh, it's just really, a, it's, it's just fluent. It's really, that's what, that's, that's how I, I, I relate to it. It's just fluent. It just, you put the good stuff in and, and just everything just uh, flows away really well. And, uh, and, and it's, it's just comfortable. Um, and I'm just blown away by the fact that I'm not, I don't need it. I don't need it in my body, that, that other stuff anymore. You know, I just don't crave yeah. it, which yeah, was cool. something I was really scared of. You know, like I yeah. said, coffee, things like that, or pasta. I mean, come on, I'm Italian. I love pasta, right? But I don't, I don't crave it because I, yeah. I guess my body's finding out that what I'm doing is so good for it that why would I put something bad in it? You know what I mean? Yeah. So I guess I'm justifying it like that mentally that, I don't, you know, when people put stuff in front of me, you know, do you want to eat this or you want, I don't eat it. I don't yeah. eat bread anymore. I don't, I don't crave it at all, at all, you know? Yeah. And, and there were times that I was, I felt weak or I felt like, you know, you have some carbs to give you energy. It was always that thing, get, get carbs to give you energy. Uh, and now I don't have carbs at all. And I have lots of energy. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. it's yeah. crazy. What's well, the thing too? Yeah. You know, and, and you were talking about your know, pre-workout and coffee as well. 
you know, but I, I've, I've absolutely found the same thing that I have so much more energy when I don't take caffeine and, you know, I mean, coffee aside, you know, I mean, sometimes like if I, if I drink coffee, like I'll, I'll just get sore after working out, which is, you know, so I know something's going on there. I know that there's, you know, this is causing some inflammation in my body that I, that wasn't there before because I normally don't get sore. And so, you know, if I would, you know, so, so, you know, uh, to get rid of that, I just would take like a caffeine pill every now and then I wasn't ever big on caffeine anyway, but just, just to have it, like if I was, you know, working uh, a long shift or working overnight. Yeah. And so maybe I would take that every time I did, I regretted it. Like for the first few hours, I felt great. I was just bouncing off the walls and, you know, and then, and then after that, I had this, this come down. I just felt so gross. I was just, I just felt really junky and gross, almost like I was, you know, fluish or something like that. And, uh, you know, and you're just withdrawing from, from this caffeine and it, and it just, it really messed with my whole health. Oh, the, hey, I remember the last time I had a Red Bull it was a long time ago, but yeah. I remember it was yesterday because it was one of the, you know, I was working and it was long hours, like you said. And I said, okay, no problem. I'll have, I'll have a little Red Bull. And man, I had like the next 24 hours were the worst 24 hours of my life. <laughs> It was horrible. And I used to drink that all the time and I just can't imagine drinking it ever again. But that 24 hours was just horrible. I couldn't sleep. It was up and down. My head was all over the place. Uh, I felt like, you know, somebody hit me with a bat. Uh, yeah. And it was like, why did I do that? And, um, <laughs> and every time I look at the Red Bull, every, I guess it's everywhere. I go, I'll never drink that stuff again. Yeah. <laughs> <Ever again. clears throat> yeah. Like, um, yeah, the pre-workout stuff too. Like I, I, I used to take pre-workout or like, you know, branch chain amino acids. And then, you know, when I was eating just a normal diet, like they were a game changer, like branch chain amino acids. Those were, those, those, those are probably one of the best things that I ever added to my workout when on a standard diet. But then when I went carnivore, I tried it. It just took, it just detracted from it. You know, it took away from that. I think a lot of that's to do with the, the artificial sweeteners as well. Uh, just the in the too. It was something that it was like, man, that stuff really, uh, for some reason, when I took Cretan, uh, and I haven't mm -hmm. taken it in probably years now, but I remember I gained like 20 pounds. Yeah. Like I, I remember taking a couple of scoops of that and, you know, and people would say, take Cretan, give you energy and all that stuff. And I would gain weight. And then it was really hard to lose it. It was like all this yeah. water gain. Yeah. Uh, really uncomfortable just just all this stuff right now that i don't ever have to take again uh yeah. ever have to buy i ever have to put anything like that in my body is really it's a good thing doc it's real. i'm really yeah. happy with yeah, good. <laughs> yeah yeah well, and that's the thing too you know people, people don't realize there's a ton of creatine in meat especially beef and you're also getting carnitine that's, and you that's yeah. different stuff right? i mean that's that's not the same stuff that they give you in the powder right well it's it's it is similar but you're also getting it in in with Natural. all the other molecules and, and things that you're supposed to be getting it with. So yeah, you don't, you don't need to supplement with, with creatine if you're just eating enough meat, you know, like it, it, I, I don't, I don't, um, you know, all this, all the different studies that look at creatine, I think that they're, um, you know, they're a bit not suspect, but I, I don't think they really prove what they're trying to prove. I don't, I, you know, a lot of these things that they'll, you put on weight, but, you know, is that actual lean muscle mass or is that, you know, water weight? You know, a lot of it's water weight. Yeah, no, I look, I, I you know, for me, I, I always want to look lean and fast, you know, Bruce Lee, you know, six foot Bruce Lee, you know, just like a lean, a dancer, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like those, that's what I want because I don't want to carry a lot of weight as I get older. I don't want to be, yeah. you know, 200 and some pounds in my, in my 60s and my 70s and, or, or, and that turns into fat anyway. So you want to be lean and and flexible and I want to be fast you know I, my bodies I always loved like Sugar Ray Leonard or Hagler mm -hmm. you know those bodies were like tight and just uh, a boxer you know like just yeah. ripped um and if I could do that in my 50s and my 60s and keep going like that then I'm happy man yeah. that, that's what I look forward to yeah nice yeah definitely and um that's I mean that's the that's the ideal is, is just aging gracefully and uh, and just being healthy the whole time you know people talk about how they're like well you know i don't want to i don't want to live you know 20 years longer 30 years longer because they look at people and, oh it makes no sense to me i was just like okay well then just you, you just it sounds like you've just given up on life you know and you're just you know you, you need to really sort some things out and i want to be there 
I remember talking in the past to some people that were taking steroids and I go, is it, is it worth it? It's like, yeah, mm-hmm. it's worth it. I'm like, what about your life? Is it worth it to, to look this good right now by taking these drugs, but your life might be cut by who knows how many years. Yeah. And some people don't care. You know, the vanity is just the vain part of them, I guess, human beings. But I look at it as health. You know, I, I never, I never was the one to train so I could go to the beach. And for me, it was always about, how healthy and how strong and how, you know, how far can I take my body to, you know, and, and, and see, you know, how I can just, uh, you know, get everything going and working really well. And that was really the goal for me, you know, because yeah. ultimately that's, that's, that's the body you got. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing. I think that some people just aren't really thinking about it because, you know, we talk about how, you know, genetically humans are actually designed to live like 120 years and yet we're dying in our sixties and seventies which is literally middle-aged. And, you know, I tell that to people and say, oh my God, I don't want to live 120 years anyway. It's like, have you thought this through? I'm not talking about like, you know, because the people look at, at someone in their seventies, they look at how much their bodies have, have decayed and they just think, oh, add another 50 years of, you know, of linear destruction to that body. And, uh, you know, and they, they, they're imagining that they've just been, they'll be, you know, wheelchair bound or bed bound for most of them. There's so much stuff that people are taking, you know, and I know people in their 70s are just taking so many antidepressants and Mm -hmm. things to go to sleep, things to wake up on, and they're addicted to these things. And I just see all these people just deteriorating. I mean, they're just don't have any, they don't have any stamina. They they have a hard time getting up. They they have a hard time moving. Um, They're, 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 I'm like, I just, it's really, they, they become like zombies, you know? And uh, I think if we promote this and keep promoting this as you get older, because I know other people who are on this diet who uh, live in their 60s and 70s who are phenomenal, you know? And, and it's got to do with what they eat. And I, I, I wish I could just, you know, because these are close friends of mine, some family members, you know, you, you try to be there for them and like get rid of that medication, you know? Because it's yeah. just, not helping you in the long run, you know, but yeah, it's tough, you know, you can only be there. And so hopefully by example, you can be there and show them, you know? Yeah. Well, I think that's um, the best way to do it. You know, I mean, I, I didn't try to, you know, you know, push my family into doing it, but they saw the results I was getting and they were just heard me, you know, excitedly talking about all the different things that I was, I was looking up and researching and finding because I just, you know, I was really just digging into the literature and trying to see exactly what we knew, exactly what we could prove and, and going from there. And I was just getting really excited talking about these things. And eventually my parents were like, started asking me questions and then asking me for a bit of help with it. And, you know, they just said, okay, we'll, we'll try it for a month. And then after a month, they're like, well, I can't, can't stop doing this. You know, their, their health was improved so much. My mom's diabetes and her blood sugar control was so much better. And my father's memory and Parkinson's was, was improved so much just from, just from one month that they're like, yeah, well, we just, we really can't justify not doing this. And, and that's what people don't get is that, you know, if being on all these drugs and and living very, very debilitated, limited lives. Sure. I wouldn't want to tack on another 50 years to that uh, on my side either, but you know, I'm talking about health. I'm talking about another 50 years in better health than you have now and, and, and living independently the entire time. And it's when you don't do that, that not only will your life be shorter, but the reason it'll be shorter is because you've been sick for decades longer and you're going, your body's going to break down faster and you're not going to be independent and you're going to be in, in a nursing home. So it's paradoxical. You'll live a shorter life, but you'll also have less uh, healthy years as well. And you'll, you know, you'll be in the nursing home longer, even though you've lived a shorter life. And so that's just, yeah, that's something that I don't want for myself. And I certainly don't want it for my family either. I think we, we sort of lost a generation of elderly because, you know, we've been telling them for 50 years, cholesterol is going to kill you. It's going to give you a heart attack. And so everyone's been eating a low fat heart healthy diet and they've all been developing Alzheimer's and, and dementia because our brains are made out of fat and they're made out of cholesterol. And if you're not eating fat and cholesterol from animal sources, we're not going to build and maintain our brains and they're going to decay. 
and you know, eating a ton of carbohydrates. Our brains are running on glucose uh, primarily, but not exclusively. We actually, our primary, our brain's primary energy source are ketones. There's a big push now talking about how it's actually glucose. That's false. That's completely that's completely wrong. Completely wrong. You know, I, I mean that that was that's something we teach in in college level biochemistry that the brain runs on ketones. Your brain always runs on ketones. And then when you're in a fasting state, which I think is our primary metabolic state, it almost exclusively runs on ketones. And even when your, your blood sugar is sort of dropping down a bit and your ketones are starting to rise, but it's still like a quarter of what your blood sugar is, your brain just switches over and just goes, nope, we're only running on ketones. We only want ketones. That's its primary source. And so we get peripheral insulin resistance. That's what type two diabetes is. And, you know, we're not getting sugar and glucose into the cells properly. That includes our brain. And so our brains aren't, aren't getting as much uh, energy as they need either. And they're not getting enough fat to rebuild themselves. And so they just start shutting down. And, and you know, if you don't have energy for your brain, it, your brain's not going to work that well. And when you switch over to a carnivore diet or even a ketogenic diet, and all of a sudden your brain starts running uh, predominantly on ketones again, these people just light up, you know, it's like, it's like flipping on a switch. And so even if someone has, has, you know, uh, you know, manifestations of dementia or Alzheimer's, you know, in a day, they can, they can all of a sudden make an improvement by, by just dropping carbohydrates and sugar and, and, and switching their, their brain's uh, energy source to ketones it makes a huge difference. And unfortunately we've, we've lost an entire generation of people that weren't made aware of that. And in fact, we're told the opposite and they were in nursing homes when they probably shouldn't have been. And they, you know, they, they lost decades of their life uh, unnecessarily. And plus yeah. all these elderly folks, for most part, they're eating a lot of sugar, donuts, yeah. and cookies and cakes, and they're doing all that. I see it with, with, with my family as well. It's just, it's just sugar on top of sugar and chocolate. And, and you know, it's, yeah. that's the main diet right there and then carbs from bread and pastas and you name it right yeah. so that, that definitely just injures your body as you get older so much more so yeah. yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna show this video to my family i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna beg them to see all the way through and just kind of just listen and open up your mind to it because yeah you really got nothing to lose you know just yeah just try it like i did and you'll see it in a really a, in a matter of a short amount of time you'll see a big change and if you know your body really well, you see that change. Why would you want to not, you know, keep it going like that? You know, it's just, it's obvious. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And, and, uh, you know, just like you were saying with, with the cholesterol, like, I, I think that's something that's, that's so important as a, as a nutrient that, that we're just not getting enough of. And, uh, and just depriving ourselves of that has, has really hurt people as well. You know, cholesterol is, is, a, is the precursor for all of our body's main hormones. It's a precursor for testosterone, estrogen, progestogens, our glucocorticoids, mineralocorticoids, uh, you know, things like cortisol, all these things, they all come from cholesterol. And, right. you know, our, all, every cell membrane in your body is cholesterol. Our bile... Uh, that our that our liver makes in order to absorb fat, that is is uh, you know one of the building blocks is cholesterol. So cholesterol is is ubiquitous. It's one of the most important molecules in our bodies. And I remember when I was a kid, you know, obviously we were told since birth that cholesterol is bad for us. And I remember learning in in like eighth grade biology that the cell membrane structure was cholesterol. And I remember thinking, I'm like. But isn't that what's, what's bad for us? Isn't that what kills us? But we're literally made out of it. And I was like, oh, that doesn't, that doesn't, really, uh, that doesn't really square out. And I was like, all right, well, I'm, you know, I'm just a kid. I don't know everything yet. I'm sure I'll learn uh, you know, how this makes sense later. But I, I filed it away as, as a curiosity. Uh, and obviously looking back now, it's just like, well, that's, that's why it's not bad for us. It's, it's a really important molecule. And so, you know, and, and just getting enough fat as well. You know, fat's so important. And, you know, even when people go carnivore, sometimes they don't eat enough fat. And that's often why they get constipation because they're just eating fat, but they're not eating as much fat as they, they may actually need to. And the way I try to explain this to people is if fat were bad for us, why would we have four different organs all working together just to absorb it? You know, the liver makes bile, the gallbladder stores bile, 
um, that's secreted into your uh, small intestine, which uh, that emulsifies the fat so you can absorb it. And the pancreas makes lipase and, and other enzymes to help break it down. And then the small intestine absorbs it. So you have, you have four organs all working together just to absorb fat. So that is a very, very important nutrient. And if it were just bad for us, if it were only causing harm, we wouldn't even have a mechanism to absorb it, we would just be like, nope, we don't want that. But you know, our body expends a lot of energy just to get fat because fat's very, very important. And you know, we we limit that at our at our own peril because it's absolutely vital. I can't wait for my friends and my family to see this video. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I am looking forward to that because these are facts, and they don't have to hear from me; they can hear from the doc himself. Yeah, <laughs> good. Um, so I was, I was going to say, um. You just, you just finished up a new movie. You were telling me, uh, you said it was, it was called Grace by Night. Is that right? Grace yeah. by Night. Can you tell, tell us, yeah, can you tell us a bit about that? That was, that was really interesting. Yeah, I, I, this is probably one of the best roles I ever played and most challenging role I ever played. Um, he's a father who lost a son to suicide, who has yeah. to rebuild his life uh, or trying to keep his life going. And uh, through this process, he, he meets a young man in high school who's dealing with a lot of family issues, a broken family and gangs and just going to the wrong side of the track. And uh, he puts him under his wing and, and, and they, they find themselves getting back to love and family. And, uh, and then there's wrestling involved, which is in incredible. Wrestling is one of those sports that is just a sports that needs to be brought back into into the it's just part of the american culture and uh it's one of those sports it's just one man against another man um and it, it's the rocky story you know and it's what we need now it's 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 a story that deals with things that we're dealing we see on the news every single day but people don't have any anything to really talk about afterwards it happens all the time suicides are happening people are taking their lives you know people are depressed uh, people are addicted uh to drugs or alcohol but and, and kids and kids are left without a father, you know, and and and, um, and so where do you go from there? Where's the family value? Where is where is God? Where's the higher power? So all that is in this film, and so much more. With great actors, and um, uh, William Oliver is is a young kid who played next to me. He's amazing. He's going to have an amazing career, and um, yeah, it was one of those films that I'm really proud of. And uh, you know, I, I produced this film, uh, and um, as well and and it's just uh it's what people need to see you know it's one of those films that you want to see over and over again that makes you feel great it makes you think about stuff and it's just motivational it's just it motivates you it makes you it makes you think about life and life is important that you can there's certain things worth fighting for and um yeah it's just one of those films that gives you the goosebumps you know and uh we're going to release it this this december uh nationwide or all over the world and i hope you get to see it and everyone yeah, gets to see because it's it's a, it's a good film for the whole family to see that, uh, that that talks about all those things that people don't want to talk about, but with a with a great ending, with a great storyline and arc, um, and uh, and like I said, it's just the, the best performance for me. Uh, I really dedicated myself to another level, um, and thanks to this diet, I was able to do it uh, with energy. Uh, but uh, I'm really proud of this one. I really am. Well, good man. Yeah, what well, sounds good, and uh, I'll definitely look out for it. I'm trying to commit myself to, to work with people that uh, have the same goal, you know, that uh, mm -hmm. we have, we want to make good pictures, good movies, motivational films, good American pictures that, that could motivate people around the world uh, with good stories, you know, action stories, dramas, comedies. Um, but entertainment is one of those places where, you know, and I, sometimes in, in the recent years, it's all about politics, it's about changing people's minds, about political views. For me, it's more about entertainment and it's just moving people, you know, what do you get out of it? Um, what, what's the big picture here, you know? And when you finish watching a movie, what's the lesson to be learned in the sense that is this movie making you a better person? It makes you think a little bit more about life. Um, and also I wanna do films to showcase what, what America really is all about, the core of this country how and what is done to a lot of people all over the world. Um, and certainly what is done for me and my family coming from Italy to America and how much I love this country, what that, what the flag means to me, um, freedom and, and, and integrity and, and honor for something, you know, and to fight for your land, you know, Australians have that, you know, I, I go to Australia a lot and they're very, you know, they're proud of their country. And, and, you know, Australians have been through so much, you know, with, 
from the beginning of, 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 of history in that country. And, and I've been going there for many years and I, I respect it so much because we have that in common about that we, we love our land. And, um, and, and it's just given so much opportunities America has done. So I want to promote that and I want to promote good films with good heart, you know? Awesome. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. And uh, it's good to see you out there doing that. It's um, obviously, you know, like you say, there, there's been a, a lot of political bent in Hollywood and, and um, it looks like you're, you're fighting against the tide and that's something that's uh, uh, hard to do, you know, and it's, it's a very brave thing to do. So it's good to see you standing up and, and, uh, and doing something you believe in, man. So uh, congratulations on, on that. I wish you all the success uh, in the world. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, my friend. And hopefully we'll meet uh, in person one of these days and, and train together, uh, whether it's in Australia or here. Both countries are great for me, so uh, hey, either one. But yeah. uh, keep doing what you're doing, and uh, I'm, I look forward to seeing this video, and, and I, I can't wait to give it to my family so they can learn one thing or two. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Sounds good, man. Well, uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Sabato. I, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for coming on. And I had, I had a great time talking to you. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you got uh, something out of it as well. A lot. Thank you very much. I appreciate it kindly. Cool. And, uh, and, and where can people uh, find you and, and see your work and, uh, and then follow you? I'm mostly on, uh, on Instagram right now. You can just go on Tony Sabato Jr. on Instagram. Um, that's really where, where I spend uh, most of my social media, if you want to call it that. So my fans can reach me there. And um, I would love to promote, you know, put this on it. And um, when it when it's out but uh yeah instagram is the way to go awesome sounds good we'll put that up in the in the show notes as well all right thank you, Mr. Sabato, thank you so much it's been it's been an absolute pleasure thank you same as for me thank you very much mm -hmm.